All right, so here with us today, we have Andrea Benar, who was our program coordinator for the practical nursing program. We also have with us today, Jody Thomas, the academic advisor for the program. We have Angela Butt, who is the associate dean of community and health studies, as well as uh, Holly Samsonovic, a current practical nursing student in their fourth, fourth term here at the college. So Andrea will be delivering key program information to help you with your post-secondary program selection. And again, you can absolutely use the chat or the Q&A feature to ask questions. And with that all said, I will now turn it over to you, Andrea. Good morning. Thanks very much, Candice. I'd also like to extend our uh, welcome to the uh, open house for the practical nursing program. Um, my name, as Candace said, is Andrea Bodner. I'm the program coordinator, and I'm also a professor in the practical nursing program. I've been with the program since 2007, uh, probably a year after it started. And uh, before we continue, I just want to tell you what a wonderful program it is and how fabulous our team is. We have a really fantastic team. So if you are considering um, the program, I want you to keep that in mind. So. One of the questions that we ask um, prospective students to think about when they're considering a career in a health profession like nursing is um, to think about yourself and to think about some of the qualities you have and think about the kinds of um, things that you might like to do. So are you someone who feels compassion for other people? Are you interested in health and wellness? And is it something that interests you where you would have the opportunity to be providing care to our patients, to our clients, and to optimize their, their health um, and wellness, or perhaps uh, support them during a surgery or a terminal illness? So at um, Niagara College in the practical nursing program, we have two streams uh, for students who are considering uh, doing their education with us. The first one is um, considered to be the, um, the full-time stream. Um, most of the courses are uh, offered in the daytime, although some of them are moving to later in the day, and that depends on scheduling. And it is a four-term program. So um, you would, we have three starts. You can either start in September or in January or in May, and you would do term one and term two, and then you would have a semester off and then you would do term three and term four. And at the end of term four, you would have your um, consolidation experience or your practicum where you would have an eight week um, opportunity to follow a nurse in the clinical setting. We also have um, an option called alternative delivery. And this is also considered full time for those of you that may uh, require OSAP, it does meet the requirements uh, as a full time program. And in this um, um, stream, students take um, the same courses, how and when those courses are delivered are a little bit different than how they would be in the full-time stream. So you would do semester one, semester two, semester three, semester four, semester five, semester six, and that would include your prac. Um, but each one of those semesters would have a little bit lighter course load. The courses are offered in the evening and on the weekend. Um, and this makes it perhaps a um, more attractive option for some of our prospective students who perhaps are working a full-time job, who have uh, childcare during the day, um, those kinds of things. So it's the exact same course, the exact same program. Um, it's just how it's uh, delivered is a little bit different. The nursing program is considered to be a competitive program. Um, and as you can see here, we do have the three starts. Currently, our uh, January start, I believe, is full, and our May start in 2022 is waitlisted. So the first available opening now, um, if you apply through OCAS, would be through uh, starting in September of 2022. The criteria um, to be admitted to the program, um, and you can see from the slide, would be English, math, biology, and chemistry. And that can be any grade 12 um, or equivalent, any grade 11 for math or equivalent, biology grade 11 or grade 12, and chemistry grade 11 or grade 12. Nope, you covered that perfectly. 
And there's no more HOE for, they don't need to do the HOE anymore starting in September. So if you're applying for January and May, you still have to do the health and occupational aptitude exam. But for the September starts, we no longer have the HOE. Right, okay. So the HOE is the health occupations aptitude exam. And it is a, um, uh, basically, as it says, it's an aptitude exam. And for, as I said, if you are already in, been admitted to the January start or the May start, then you would have completed that. But if you're applying for September, uh, then it's only going to be through your, um, the courses that I listed on the previous slide. So um, some of the program highlights from um, the PN program, as I indicated in the earlier slide, we do have the alternative delivery. So those um, courses are delivered on the weekend and in the evening. So that helps to facilitate um, returning to school, perhaps, if you have a full-time job or you have childcare issues, et cetera. We have over 140 hours of hands-on um, experiential learning. So this is in um, our simulation labs, and you'll see there are uh, there will be some slides and a video coming up uh, in a little bit that will give you some um, images of what our simulation labs are. And the simulation labs are exactly what they sound like. They simulate a uh, healthcare environment, and in this case, the hospital. So students have an opportunity to practice um, in an environment that is safe, where they can make mistakes without actually um, worried about harming a patient. We have a variety of different kinds of mannequins, um, and some of them are called high fidelity mannequins, and they actually will talk to you or respond as you interact. And in this way, um, you learn how to develop your nursing skills. Uh, because as you may be aware, there's a variety of elements that are required to becoming a nurse. So part of it is the theory element and the knowledge that you need, but you need to take that knowledge and apply it into taking care of a patient and do a variety of skills. And the lab is where you learn how to do that. Through the course of the program, you'll have an opportunity to have clinical placements in a variety of different areas. So primarily looking in the, um, the long-term care settings, uh, looking at Niagara Health and a variety of the units. So those are usually more acute medical or acute surgical placements and also in complex continuing care where we see patients that perhaps don't need the same level of care as in the hospital, but really have complex issues um, as well. At the end of the uh, semesters, you finish with an eight week practicum, as I indicated before, it's about 320 hours and you are assigned a, a clinical site um, and that is done by lottery. And you are in that clinical site or that unit, you would have a preceptor and you would uh, be following that preceptor for eight weeks, uh, following their schedule, which may mean you may be working days, uh, evenings, nights, weekends, et cetera, to get your 320 hours. We also have a really unique course. It's usually, um, I think it's still, is it in second semester, Angela, for full-time and alt or? or third semester, and I forget in the- You're muted, for Health 1020? Yeah. At the moment, it's in the second semester. Second semester. Time. Yeah. And so fourth semester for ALT. It's in fourth, thanks, Jody. So as you can hear, um, there's a little bit of um, difference sometimes when the courses are being offered, but they're the same courses. So this is a really unique course to um, Niagara College, and this course is called Interprofessional Education. And this course, um, you take with other students in the other health disciplines, there's 13 other health disciplines in our, um, in our program, and you are taking this course and learning about how to work with other healthcare providers uh, in the clinical settings, because nurses don't work in a vacuum. We work in any setting that we work at. We work with a variety of other healthcare providers. So the interprofessional education course sets you up really well because you learn about these other healthcare disciplines what they're bringing to the table in um, terms of patient care and the things that they're able to do, et cetera. And you learn how to develop your communication and your collaboration and your conflict resolution, uh, conflict resolution skills. It's a really uh, fabulous course. I've had the opportunity to teach it a number of times over the years and uh, feedback from students is really positive. Once you complete your um, course load successfully at Niagara College, you are eligible to write the um, nursing registration exam. And starting in January of 2022, the name of the exam is gonna be called the RECS-PN. And this is the exam that um, 
practical nursing grads in Ontario and British Columbia will be writing. Once you successfully pass that exam, you are eligible to be registered with a regular bo regulatory body in Ontario called the College of Nurses of Ontario, and then you can practice as a registered practical nurse in the province. All right, so there's a video here that Candace is going to play that's going to give you an example of experiential learning and, and what the simulation lab looks like. In the simulation lab, we have different pieces of equipment that helps us uh, achieve the goal of a simulated environment. But one of the ones that we feel has been very instrumental in helping our students understand what it is to be like in the real setting is our 3G SimMan, the mannequin that pretty much uh, does everything and allows the students to interact with the mannequin so that they know uh, what it is um, that they need to do for their clients. For giving us a situation we just need to see on whether if we know what we're doing with the skills to to give to the patient. Uh, the students get a chance to find out how well to do their skills that will be of importance when they encounter their real life patients. They really jump into okay let's address the respiratory or the oxygen piece but you, you said to each other well let's wait and see if it stays that way. We can then approach it when we really need to. they use the appropriate judgment to make the right interventions that may potentially save a patient's life. It's huge. If you're nervous and you're kind of have like a mind block, then you're not going to react right away. You're not going to know what to do because you're so unprepared really. But once we got over that, once we figured out which role does what, then we were able to get right in there and pay attention to the patient and follow protocol. So in this um, screen also, you can see a variety of uh, photos uh, from students that are working uh, in the lab and some of the different experiences again. Certainly um, on the screen, if you look in the top right, it does remind me of um, uh, being in the hospital and seeing all of, I used to work in the, an ER and that certainly always reminds me of working in the ER and seeing all of the patients lined up like that, so. So one of the questions we get often is, okay, I decide to come to school to become a, um, a registered practical nurse and where can I work? The options are limitless, I would say. Now, um, certainly in the past few years, we have seen more and more areas opening up to practical, uh, the registered practical nurse. You can see from the slide that there's a variety of uh, places here. Um, but we've seen even areas that historically have been um, perhaps less inclined to hire the registered practical nurse and wanting to hire the registered nurse. We are seeing um, those barriers being broken down now because there's increased understanding about the um, abilities of the uh, registered practical nurse. So we're seeing nurses working in places like um, uh, in Hamilton Health Sciences, for example, in their critical care areas. Um, the practical, the registered practical nurses are being educated in a variety of areas in critical care. We're seeing them working on uh, telemetry units where the patients perhaps have had heart surgery and they're coming back and being monitored. Uh, we're seeing them in the ER. Certainly there's a ex huge growth in mental health and um, uh, we're seeing them in mental health, variety of uh, different areas aside from where traditionally they have worked, which is in the long-term care in the long-term care setting. Um, Angela, anything you want to add to that? Uh, probably just to say that uh, if we're looking for expansions for RPN uh, opportunities, this is the golden moment because uh, yes. as any anytime you turn into the news, you know we're in the midst of a healthcare human resource crisis. And uh, yeah, like I say, this is the golden moment to be coming into the career. Absolutely. And we are seeing, um, now students graduating and coming out with full-time jobs. Uh, some of them are getting $10,000 sign-on bonuses depending on where they um, go. So it's a really um, exciting time to, as Angela said, to become a registered practical nurse. So we're gonna hear from um, Holly, who is um, a student in our program. And she's gonna tell you a little bit about her experiences um, in the program and at Niagara College. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. 
My name is Holly. I'm a term four student in the practical nursing program. And as I kind of reach the end of my uh, time here at the college, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has helped me. The professors have been amazing throughout the entire time. They really do help you to just because, you know, just coming in, you're nervous. You know, sometimes you're a bit stressed. It's a uh, it's quite the field to go into and uh, the professors just really help you to succeed they help you to just really just get your academic goals and get plenty of time in the lab um, plenty of experiences and opportunities at the college I could not imagine going anywhere else to for my nursing career really it's just it's been amazing here <laughs> is there um so some of the reasons why I had chosen Niagara College was because they had so many resources available to their students. They had a lot of opportunities for me, um, ways to get involved on campus, as well as the clinical experience. As you heard before, there is plenty of hours that we have to get in and there's lots, lots to do. It's very compact, but it's very, very worthwhile. Um, Niagara College, they have a great faculty. They have great staff, they have great resources. Their community is very welcoming. They help students a lot, a lot, a lot. They really do prepare you for the nursing field. Going in, I was I was a bit nervous, really, but they they get you under their wing and with their experiences that they all come with. It's it's a great experience. The faculty and the services they offer they offer so much support to their students through health and wellness. You can even do some co curriculars while you're there. There's library services and there's peer tutoring. I'm also a peer tutor at the college and peer tutors can really help you too. If you are struggling in a class or anything, peer tutors and your professors can, they can help you with that. And I've had a great experience here and I would 100% recommend it to anybody who is looking to go into a nursing field. Thank you so much, Holly. Can I ask you a couple of questions? The same questions I posed to, um, um, the, the student who was helping us out in the PSW open house. And one was, what do you think is the, the quality of yourself that has made kind of coming into the practical nursing program easier to manage? What characteristic of yourself do you think really added to your ability to succeed in the program? And the second question is, what do you wish you had known before you got here? Thank you. Thank you for that question. So I always say what helps me the most it would probably be compassion. Coming into the program, I've always been very compassionate about helping others, about helping people. I wanted to know everything there was to know about the hospitals and long-term care and all the facilities. So having that compassion in you and just knowing why you're in the program, why you applied in the first place, it's really beneficial throughout the entire time. When I've been in clinical settings or I've been in classes or I've been in the labs as shown in the pictures there, I just I knew that I'm just compassionate and I'm there to help people and it really helps to drive your learning and it makes you want to just learn more and just really dive into the lectures and dive into the PowerPoints, do your readings, just that compassion for helping people and you want to know um, what to do. So the compassion there has really been for sure a major part. And something that I might have wished I would have known would probably um, that's a tough question because the open house and everything, it really does prepare you and you get a good sense of the program, but this thing that I wish I would have known would be to just really get in there. I know you're nervous, but just get in there, you know, just throw yourself in there, throw yourself at opportunities that there is. There's so many that pop up here and there. Just, I, I know you're nervous. I know you're stressed. Just get in there and ask questions. Like, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. We're here to help you and we're here to, we want you to succeed. We want you to see you grow throughout the program. So I would say just, I know you're nervous, just make friends, make so many friends, enjoy your classmates and form groups with each other and just really just exceed. We want you to succeed in the program and whatever you think will make you succeed, just do it. Thank you, Holly. And I love the way you say, we want you to succeed. And that's a beautiful reality of nursing is that it, it's competitive, but it's, it's also a, 
a family. And I think for Andrea and me, one of our favorite moments of every year is pitting ceremony when we get to welcome you as colleagues. And it really is a, we do want you to succeed. succeed. Thank you so much, Holly. Thank you. Um, so I believe Jody, you said you would answer this one live, but it, it, it the question I, is, is the session geared more towards international students? I think I just made a mistake and I somehow managed to do the live option rather than the actual written option. So there's a couple in there um, that I didn't answer because they're internationally based. So I would just encourage the student to reach out to me and I'll put my email in chat so that they can, I can answer those questions. Um, we just have that one question about, and I just thought I'd let Angela or Andrea mention that about, they wanna know about moving on to RN afterwards. Oh, that's a, Big question, uh, good question. So um, hmm. there are there's so many moving parts about the answer to that question right now. I'm not sure if um, you've been watching some of the uh, provincial announcements that have been happening lately, but there have been many millions of dollars that have been directed to colleges um, with regards to bridging programs either from PSW to practical nursing or from practical nursing to uh, BSCN for becoming a registered nurse. So again, like I said earlier, this is the golden moment for coming into the program because um, the province is actively engaged in creating more laddering opportunities for graduates from various programs. That being said, because they're just at the here's the money, how are we going to make this work? I don't have a very comprehensive answer to you about what you might expect to see in uh, two and a half years. Um, there are several RN programs across the province. We, we do not have articulation agreements with any of them, um, and it would be up to the receiving university in terms of what they accepted as um, equivalents and giving you advanced standing in their programs. That being said, we are actively engaged in um, the creation of a Bachelor of Science of Nursing right now. Um, we are hoping, and please hear the word hoping because there are no guarantees. All of this still has to go through Ministry and College of Nurses um, of Ontario approval. And so we'll take a couple of years, but we're hoping for a 2023 or a 2024 start to that Bachelor of Nursing program should we be given approval. And that would also then, uh, we would be creating laddering opportunities between students graduating from our practical nursing program into what we hope to have as our Bachelor of Nursing program. So I'm sorry, I don't have a more exact answer. That's the best I can do right now. That's um, some really exciting information. Um, so that's great. So we'll be looking forward to seeing some updates surrounding um, that program. We do have another question in here. We have, we have a couple questions actually surrounding clinical placements. So one is uh, how far is the commute? And the other one is clinical placements can be, or like, can it be anywhere in the Niagara region is the other part of that question. Andrea, do you want to field that? Sure. So um, the uh, clinical placements can be anywhere in the Niagara region. And it's really important for um, our students to understand that often you need to be, if you're doing a, um, a day shift, you have to be at the clinical site often by 6.30 in the morning. Um, and so you would need to uh, um, factor in time. So if you've got a clinical placement, so if you live in um, Niagara Falls and you have a clinical placement in Welland, for example, you would need to factor in that time. Um, also, if you have children and many of our students in the program are parents, you need to be thinking about issues like childcare, um, daycare, do things open that early? What do you do if the child is sick? Um, because we have very strict attendance policies regarding clinical placements. And if you are unable to attend, regardless of the reason, it can certainly um, jeopardize your ability to be successful in that clinical placement for that term, um, which is not something that we want to see happen. So we ask our students early to start thinking about some of those issues and how they um, would strategize uh, dealing with them. Thank is there you. another question, Candace, that I missed? 
Um, no, I think you covered it. Um, okay. Also, Jody had answered a question in the chat that hopefully everybody got to see uh, surrounding the GPA for admissions into the program. And she had just mentioned that they are looking for 85% or higher, um, just for any of any people that are tuning into this session that uh, to the recording and not the live session that that is also being answered. Um, there is another question surrounding agreements with universities uh, for continuing education. Mm -hmm. Would somebody be uh, able to just touch on that there? Uh, so like I said, there aren't articulation agreements between um, Niagara College and other universities. What you will see is each university, if they do have um, a, a college partner, so for instance, right now, I think um, Brock is still partnered with Loyalist, although I don't know if that, how much longer that relationship is continuing. Uh, Mohawk and McMaster, absolutely. So some universities will have a college partner that has a more direct line from one to the other. But um, two years ago, when the Ministry of Health granted um, degree offering options to colleges for nursing degrees, that really changed the landscape. And so there are a lot of colleges who are dissolving their relationships with universities and going out on their own with regards to offering um, their own bachelors. So I would expect to see there will be fewer and fewer universities who actually have those partnerships existing with colleges as colleges go out on their own to offer these degrees. We've not had one of those relationships, so fortunately we don't have a dissolution to proceed through and um, can get a bit of a jump start on starting on our own helping our students move from our practical nursing program to, like I say, what I hope will be our BSEN program in the future. And Angela, I was just gonna add also mm -hmm. currently and un un uncertain again what the landscape's gonna look like in you know three, four years with the college colleges uh, dissolving those agreements, but our students that have graduated from the um, our practical nursing program and those that have decided to uh, pursue their uh, BSN, Many of them are, um, some of the universities have bridging programs. So it's not necessarily a specific agreement with a college, but if you've graduated from a practical nursing program like Niagara, you can apply to uh, um, be admitted into the bridging program. And that's usually uh, three years. So there would be one year of sort of a general uh, introduction to university and then two years to complete your uh, BSN as well. So there are there's a few pathways available to um, our students when they graduate from the RPN program. And a number of our students have went on to Nipissing. Nipissing is usually oh, okay. accepts our students and it's strictly, it's mainly online, but it is part-time, but it is online with doing your clinical placements here in the Niagara region or wherever you're from. So that's all, that's an area that a lot of our students go to. Fantastic. Um, we do only have, I do want to just remind everyone that we only have a few minutes left in the session. So I'm going to try and get a couple of questions out um, kind of in a row and then we can answer them. Um, one of the questions is asking about how many spots are available in the program. And then there is another question asking about the delivery of the program, um, aka whether it's hybrid, in person, how many in person. Um, so for the full time, practical nursing program, we are taking 90 students into most of our intakes right now. Um, for the alternate delivery, it's 30 students, so a total of 120. Um, the May intake is a little bit different, uh, but generally speaking, it's 120 per intake total over both the full-time and the all programs. Uh, with regards to how things are being offered, um, the large majority of our courses are on campus. However, one of the things that happened with COVID is that we did find that there were a couple of our courses that we had traditionally done on campus that actually seemed to have promote better success for students when they were online. And Andrea has a course, I forget which one it is, Andrea. Is it Progro? Nursing Theory 3 Nursing and theory. Patho, yeah. the second Patho. Both. Yeah. So based on the, that learning, and, and just like everybody, we do continuous learning all the time about what serves our students best. Um, right now, the plan is not to return those courses to campus, that they will continue to be online because like we've found, yeah, whatever promotes student success, that's what we want to engage in. 
Thank you. Um, for other questions, I would direct you to um, send an email to Jody because she has put her email in the chat for you there. I'm also going to be putting um, a link to meet up with a recruitment team member if you need any more uh, conversations surrounding even just the college or other program options, um, things of that nature. I do want to give a big thank you to everyone that was here today, um, students included, as well as like Jody, Holly, uh, Andrea, and Angela. This was very informative. I think the um, students that tuned in are going to benefit greatly from uh, coming to the fall open house for the practical nursing program. Um, if you want to say any last words, you can absolutely go ahead. And um, yeah, I think this has been a successful session. Andrea, do you have closing comments for us? I just wanted to say thank you to everyone as well. And uh, just to restate what I said in the beginning and also to um, support what Holly said, that um, we have a fabulous program and our goal is for you to be successful. And we have a really wonderful team of um, people that uh, their purpose is to help you accomplish your goal of becoming a practical nurse. So um, we hope to see you. Thanks, uh, thank you. Thanks, Candace. Thanks, everybody. You're very welcome. Bye.